Good evening and welcome to the final game of day one of the weekend of champions. It's the 6A state softball championship game. The Bentonville Lady Tigers and the Lady Panthers of Cabots. Welcome to the ballpark, Eric King. I'm Bobby Swaffer. We're going to have the call for you today. And Eric, these two teams, no strangers to the state championship game, but we've got to start with the defending state champion, the Bentonville Lady Tigers. The road from Northwest Arkansas here to Central Arkansas, well paved by the Lady Tigers the last That's few years. exactly right. I mean, you look at this record at Coach Early has with this team. I mean, they're 23 and three this year, 14 and 0 in that conference, and that 6A West is a tough conference. But you go back and you look at the history of this squad. Like you said, they're the defending state championships, but man, this is no strange place for them at all. Sixth straight state championships appearance for Bentonville. That's the most ever and the largest classification in the state of Arkansas. One shy of Foreman's record of seven consecutive finals appearances. But the last time Bentonville lost in the championship game, came to the same Cabot squad. That was way back in 2019, so they not strangers to the biggest stage either. No, definitely. Coach Cope's got this team going, and uh, I'll tell you what, when you look at this Cabot uh, squad, they, they are here ready to play, and again, they would like for this to be the, the next loss that the Bentonville Lady Tigers get is tonight right here in the finals. Well, you, you th think of the losses that Bentonville has had this year. There's only three of them. They're 23 and three. All three came to the team that calls this park home, the Benton Lady Panthers, who are in the 5A state championship game so they're battle tested not perfect but obviously going to take a huge test for Bentonville if they want to pull this one out today. Well definitely and uh, they'll, they'll face a pretty good lineup here from Cabot uh, uh, but again I think you got to go with experience here a little bit and just know that this Bentonville squad not only in the field and not only in the circle but they're pretty impressive at the plate as well. Yeah you look at Cabot's resume as well 21-5 overall on the season you mentioned head coach Chris Cope. Uh, their losses this year, three of the five, the teams that are playing for a state championship this weekend. They lost to Valley View, who's a finalist in the 4A game. They lost to both teams that are in the 5A state championship game. That would be Bitten and Green County Tech. So how these two teams get here in the state tournament? Well, for Cabot, they defeated Rogers Heritage 9-0 and then took care of Rogers 2-1 to to reach the state championship game. Bittenville, on the other hand, well, they put up some runs in their two games in the state tournament, took down North Little Rock 11-4, then handled Bryant 13-3. So a little small ball on the Cabot side. A little bit of the big sticks for Bentonville is how they got here. Now this game right here will be, uh, it's going to be fast pace uh, as what uh, we're talking about in that first ball game. It's just, it's one of those type games that uh, from the first pitch to the last pitch, it's just everybody's hopping around. So uh, it'll be exciting to see uh, both these teams take the field today. Yeah, Ryan Sanders in the circle today for Bentonville. 15 starts this year, 14 and one on the year, giving up 72 hits and uh, just under 87 innings of work. But the strikeout to walk ratio, well, it's pretty good. How about 111? strikeouts compared to just eight walks. She's going to make whoever stamps in the batting box earn it. Well, she definitely knows what the strike zone is for sure. And uh, you know, Coach Cope has talked to his players about that, is that she's going to throw strikes. So just get in there and get ready to hit the ball. And, uh, you know, Cabot's got some good hitters. If you look down that lineup for Cabot, <laughs> they're going to lead off here with uh, with uh, with Bernard, their pitcher. And she's batting 465. And so uh, and then you go to Brady. And then you go to uh, uh, Brianna Garage. And it, again, uh, Bobby, I look, I look at this team, and I think it's going to be one of those type games that just put the ball in play, make both sides of the defense, uh, make them catch it, make them make a good throw, and uh, make the other player uh, make a play as well. So it's uh, going to be a lot of offense, I believe, in this game. And that's a good look at Ryan Sanders, the pitcher for Bentonville. The catcher makes up the battery, Sarah Watson, for the Lady Tigers. And you mentioned the aforementioned of Caleb Bernard steps in first for the Lady Panthers. And we are set for the 6A state championship game here in Benton. First pitch, 7.06 officially up and out of the zone. Ball one, you're going to see a little patience from this Cabot squad as well. And make him come over the plates. Always got to play off the nerves. Never know how the teenagers are going to handle playing in the state championship game. Again, you know both coaches have, have got them ready here, but the experience goes a little bit to Benville. But, uh, you know, we talked about it. Uh, it's not a strange place either for those Lady Panthers. And Bernard, 25 RBIs, as you mentioned, hitting 465 this year. Also drawn 13 walks. She's ahead in the count, two and one. As that one misses inside, 33 hits in her 85 plate appearances, only 71 official at bats. So that's how you hit close to 500. She's the tone setter for this Lady Panther squad. Hello. 
take a look at the Bentonville defense in just a moment. 2-1 pitch. One catches the outside corner, even at 2-2 two and two across the outfield. Howley Robinson, Elena rushing, Amber Turner from left to right. For the Lady Tigers on the infield, Casey Woods at third, Caden Stafford at short, Tallulah Pascucci at second, and Trista Peterson over at first base for Bentonville. 2-2 two -two pitch, chopped to third. Stab by Wood. The Arkansas commit makes the strong throw. Peterson with the scoop. First out of the inning. Woodford Jr. Casey Wood was right there on top of that. She had a big hop there. I mean, she made a great throw over there. A good, good way to start this game off for uh, Benville. Well, notice the playing surface doesn't look like a normal softball field because, well, it's not. It's fake grass. Artificial turf all the way from the backstop to the outfield wall. Bentonville used to that. They've got that there at their home complex. So they handle the big hop. Step in, Adria Brady, number two hitter for the Lady Panthers. Hit just 209 this year, but limited action. Nine hits and 43 at bats. That pitch well high, can't be handled by the catcher Watson. It goes to the backstop, evens the count at one and one. I thought you tried to throw a little off speed there, and you just got away from her. Beautiful night. The playing conditions, a little winds, not much. The American flag way out beyond left field's wall. Hanging limp right now. Nice pitch there on the outside. Got Brady to chase. Which he just went there after right there. So Sanders ahead in the count. Looking for her first punch out of the day. As I mentioned in the pregame, 111 strikeouts and 87 innings of work now. For Sanders. That one. Off speed pitch right down the pipe. Cup Brady looking and quickly two up, two down for the Lady Panthers offense. Well, pretty quick into this ball game. She gets a, a strikeout number 112. It's, it's a nice job of changing speeds, changing the bat level, the eye level there. That one just right down the heart of the plate. And that's a pretty easy call for the home plate umpire. We'll get to the officiating crew in just a moment as well. Brianna Garga. Here she takes it. Home plate up part today. Ray Burwell, first base. Joe Duhon, and over at third is Michael Reese. Power crew today. Garriga hitting 306 on the season. That one catches the outside portion of the plate. Even a a ball and a strike. And she uh, she got her stride out there pretty early there. She'd almost committed, but couldn't quite get the bat around. Three home runs for Gariga this season. So a little pop in the bat. A little three-hole hitter for Cat. Swung underneath that one. Uh, she falls behind one and two. You can see Sanders not afraid of this Cabot lineup. And she's going to attack the zone and force the Lady Panthers to put the bat on the base, the softball, excuse me. Exactly correct. They're definitely going to have to hit the ball tonight because uh, she's not going to shout away at all. One and two counts. Sanders looking to clean up the first. And she does. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to close out the first inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. Bentonville pretty clean on that top. We'll see what they can do at the plate. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. This month on Arkansas PBS. It's been the best thing that has ever happened to me. So join me as we journey through America's forests. Hey, I'm Rick Steves. Join me dazzled by neo-Byzantine art and dine well on local cuisine. I the highest lift in all of Europe. I'm Samantha Brown, and I'm always looking to find the destinations, the experiences, and most importantly, the people. Only on Arkansas PBS. 
Experience the action all over again next week. Watch all the championship games at youtube.com forward slash Arkansas PBS. Kayla Bernard in the circle for Cabot. 14 and four record this year. She's committed to play at Arkansas Tech. Struck out 182 in her 122 innings of work. Walked just 40, giving up 19 earned runs. She's going to face a loaded lineup. Seven players on this Bentonville roster, Eric King, are committed to play at the next level. And that starts with Casey Wood. Committed to play for the Razorbacks. 471 average, four home runs, 21 RBIs, and she scored 38 runs. And the on-base percentage, almost 600. That's pretty impressive when you look at the top to bottom here uh, for this offense for the Lady Tigers. That one sails to the backstop. Emma Scales makes up the battery mate. For Bernard, we'll go around the outfield and infield. Just a moment to find out who's on the field for the Lady Panthers. As Casey Wood steps in. That one splits the heart of the plate. One and one. Go across the outfield. Paige Pierpoint in left. Emma Holland in center. Jarrah Potter's out in right. Andrea Brady is at third. Peyton Nicholson at second. Brianna Garaga at first. As that one misses outside. I mentioned scales behind the plate. Bernard there at the pitching circle. Alyssa Duncan isn't short. That one misses high. Three and one. This is not what you want to do, Eric, as far as a pitcher. You don't want to get behind a potent offense like Bentonville has. Eight players hitting 400 or better. And you don't want to give them any freebies either. You definitely want them to earn it, as we know they can. That one misses just off the edge of the plate. And a leadoff walk for Casey Wood. So that one was close. You can see it there. Catcher had to pull it back in just a little too much. Don't get the benefit of the call. The 13th base on ball drawn by Wood this year. So that brings up Elena Rushing. Rushing a senior going to Oklahoma Baptist. Quickly. The base path and Wood steals second base easily. <laughs> there was Not wasting any time. I don't guess there's any doubt in her mind whatsoever what her job was when she got on bats. So now a runner in scoring position for rushing, and all she's done this year is drive in 17. Hitting 478, second best on the team. Lay down a bunt, that one goes foul, even to count at one. Nice crowd. Bentonville had a... Both these teams travel well. Yeah, Bentonville had the afternoon session here at the Weekend of Champions. Baseball team played for the 6A championship just a little bit earlier. Fell on the short end of the stick. Fell to Conway, 10 to 7. Six legs, cat beat the four-legged cat. <laughs> nice pitch right over the heart of the plate. Strike three in the first strikeouts of the contest for Bernard. You're going to know that builds a little bit of confidence for Bernard out there in the circle after putting that first one on base. 183 strikeouts now. That one just elevated. Rushing. Tried a little bit of a slap hit there. Couldn't get the barrel on the ball. First out of the inning. Brings up Sarah Watson, number nine. She's committed to Nebraska Omaha. That one off the edge of the plate. Watson hitting 427. Pair of home runs, Got 12 doubles though. So she's a threat, foul line to foul line. Bernard misses high, 2-0. Look at this team too, there's not many strikeouts uh, on this uh, Bentonville. <laughs> you, you, you look at the roster, 14 strikeouts is the most for any player. <laughs> exactly. 3-0. You're overthrowing it just a touch. Bernard missing well high. 40 walks this year, issued in 123 innings. But she walked her second of the inning here as Watson takes the free pass. So Bittenville mounting a rally here in the first. Thanks to a pair of base on balls. It's going to bring up the cleanup hitter and the pitcher, Ryan Sanders. Sanders hitting 
348, but she is in the cleanup position for a reason. Eight home runs, 34 RBIs, and certainly not the position that Bernard wants it or expected to be in here in the first. Looks like they pinch run there. They brought in Casey Alford, the courtesy runner for Bentonville. So Sanders steps in. It's actually Sidney Ruda. Pitcher on pitcher crime here. That one up and away. Bernard struggling to find the strike zone here in the first inning. See what I really like about these Benville runners is, man, they're popping off that bag yeah. quite a bit. Their, their secondary lead is they are, they're almost uh, daring a throw. Exactly. I'll say a throw behind them is just going to put them on the next base. Misses high again, Eric. So now you've got a pitcher struggling with command. She got you to the state championship game. What would you, as a coach, what would you tell your pitcher to try to settle in? Yeah, you're going to settle down a little bit. You got a great offensive team here. Just throw strikes. Let your defense do the work. Two and zero. Oh, obviously, a hitter's count here for Ryan Sanders. That one hit her. Not exactly what you, I was speaking of, but that's going to load the bases all without the benefit of a base hit. You know, that's something that, again, you really want this bunch to earn it. And I can say there's going to be a visit out to the circle. Trista Peterson going to come up with the bases loaded, hitting 408 on the season. Ten home runs. That is the team lead. 32 RBIs. That's second for this Lady Tiger squad. And well, that's why you put them in the five hole, because you want players like Peterson to come up with runners on base and have a chance to deliver a huge blow here in the bottom of the first. Tell you what, right now with the way uh, Cabot's struggling in the circle, you you got to think that just getting out of here with one or two runs would be a plus for him. Yep. There's one out here in the bottom of the first. Looks like we've got another courtesy runner over on at first. That's, well, that's Addie Ward. So Trista Peterson steps into the Right-handed batter's box, bases loaded. One out here, bottom first in the 6A state championship game. That one, nice pitch there for Bernard to, to work ahead from the count, catches the outside corner. You got to like that if you're the pitcher coach. You go out there and talk to him, and the very first next pitch you get is uh, right down the middle. Coachability. It's rare these days, but some of them have it. <laughs> That one high and away, pitch, ball pops out, run's gonna score. Bentonville takes advantage of a miscue and Aaron pitching and they score the game's first run as Casey Wood able to scamper home from third. Every runner moves up as well, so now two in scoring position and already a tally in the run column. So look at it there, just no play. Where they're hopping off the bag here, just one mishandle, this is gonna move them up a few. Peterson was right on that one. That one fouled directly back into the screen. Bernard is ahead in the count, one and two. Lady Tigers trying to win another state championship. One and 21. Of course, nobody played in 20. Thanks, Coven. Pitch misses inside. Yeah, we got state championships in uh, 16, 17, 18, and like you said, uh, 21. So again, no stranger here is Coach Early in this uh, Lady Tiger squad, and uh, right now uh, things are going their way. Yeah, Peterson showing bunt, two and two. Count pulls it back, ball to the backstop again. Another run because they're going to have to play at the plate. And the sliding under the tag is Watson and Bittenville, who does not have a hit yet, and already has two runs on the board. And that's definitely not a way that you want to start a game off, not with a team <laughs> as successful as uh, Bentonville's been from the plate. Yeah, first one scores on a pass ball, that one on a wild pitch. The Lady Tigers have a 2 nothing lead and a runner on third. Peterson will flare up the middle. That one can't be handled by the second baseman, Nicholson, and Aaron throw. That's going to allow the run to score. And Bentonville, again, without the benefit of a hit, I'm going to take a 3 nothing lead. I think if you uh, talk to the coach and say you can't hit less and get three runs, I would, I would think Coach Early would think that <laughs> all the uh, softball uh, guys are in his favor right now. So the runner, did, Peterson, did not advance on the air. 
or the throw, I should say, that went to the first base foul line. So that one's fouled away as Amber Turner steps in for her first plate appearance. Here's a look at this little flare just outside the reach, but that's a play you've got to make if you're the second baseman Nicholson. Well, then again, picking it up and uh, just kind of throwing it over there to first. Hopefully getting getting it out uh, ends up uh, letting that other run from third score. And we're Turner. She takes one high. Turner hitting 315 on the season, seven home runs, 28 RBIs, 12 extra base hits. So you think, okay, we're the back half of the order. It's going to start to taper off a bit. Well, not so much. That piss Mitch is high as well. Cabot certainly outnumbering the Bentonville faithful. And you think they're all going to start uh, funneling over here after the base, uh, baseball crowd leaves. So. And foul back. So they did award Peterson, I guess, with the infield hit. Pretty generous. Yeah. So we'll circle that in the column with the run scored on the air. So three runs, a hit, and an error so far in this bottom of the first for Bentonville. Swing and a miss. Nice job there by Bernard. Battles back to get the second out of the inning, her second strikeout of the frame. She went right at her there, Bobby. Savannah Schnickel going to come up next. Schenkel hitting 418. Just keeps coming. 18 RBIs, five home runs. Let's see if Bernard can settle in and limit the damage to this three. It's fouled straight back into the screen. When she gets in her groove, you know, uh, Bentonville's still going to take some hacks yeah. at it, even though they, they've had the opportunity to reach base and get three runs uh, without a hit. So you've got to find a way to limit the damage, though, if you are Cabot, as Bentonville's only given up 49 runs. All season long. Allen splits the plates. Bernard ahead 0-2. I love the way Bernard's coming back here and just firing at him. She's uh again, she's not she's not worried about what's going on up here at the plate. She just needs to get an out or two. It's just off the edge. Bernard thought she might have caught enough of the corner to get the backwards K, but instead gotta come back for the one-two count. Look at the total runs allowed this year. Cabot's only given up 34 runs all season long. Bentonville finds a way to scratch across three here in the first. That one a little too far off the play as well. Evens up the count two and two. That says a lot about this Cabot defense as well. Peterson's the runner at first. Fouls directly back into the screen. Anytime right. you see that the ball go directly back, that means they're on it. Shankle's been it. right on Bernard in this at bat. Well, in that first ball game we had, uh, Bobby, they <laughs> a lot of them pitchers and uh, batters they battled. I mean, I think one uh, one we counted had seven foul balls before she actually getting a hit. So Shankle again. This one soars over the first base dugout. Out of play. Do it again. It's making them work. You're right. There's a lot of red here in the crowd for Cabot. It's a lot easier drive from Cabot here to Benton than it is from Bentonville. <laughs> Let's do it again. Yeah. Pitch count already starting to, to mount for Bernard. Two and two pitch. Again, Schenkel right on top of it. He's on top of it. She, Bernard better not make a mistake here and miss it because I think she could find her a gap. Couldn't find a way to, to limit the damage. See Coach Kent Early in his third base coaching box. Looking for another state title for his squad. That one a little too far off the plate. Now full count. That's going to put the runner in, in motion over at first. So Peterson will take off with the pitch. 26 pitches already thrown here in this first inning by Kayla Bernard. Oh, 
That one just inside. Bernard throws her hand to the sky. Wanted that call, but doesn't get it. The third walk earned by this Bentonville offense here in the first inning. Two that she thought she had on the outside, and now she's a. Uh, Battling. You just don't want to get her head down because uh, right now, uh, you know, she gave up some some runs without a hit, and uh, now all of a sudden she found herself uh, giving up a walk there. You see a lot of late movement on that. One plate umpire deemed that was too far inside. So runners on first and second for Caden Stafford. That one too high. Stafford's committed to play at Kansas. 288. Pair of home runs, 17 RBIs. Again, seven players from this Bentonville offense committed to play at the next level. Stafford drives this one to the gap in left center field. But Emma Holland able to range over and make the play. The inning comes to an end, but not before Bentonville pushes three across. A couple wild pitches, base hit and an error. Lady Tigers trying to defend their 6A state championship. They've got an early 3-0 lead as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all our Kansans. Community, dignity, respect. That's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. Did you know fans could see the live game stats before we do? Download the Arkansas PBS Engage app to get all the numbers during the live game. After an inning of play, Bentonville has a 3-0 lead. 38 pitches they saw from Michaela Bernard. Now we'll see if the Cabot offense can start to pick up some of the slack. Four, five, and six coming up to the plate. Emma Scales going to lead things off for the Lady Panthers offense. You know, Coach Cope would like to get a couple runners on base to give that defense a little bit of rest. Scales hitting 478 this season. Five homers, 12 RBIs. We talked about how long the offense was out there for Bentonville. That means their starting pitcher wasn't able to keep the arm loose. So we'll see how Ryan Sanders adjusts to that long inning. As a pitcher, though, that's always a, a good problem to have. Exactly. Swing and a miss. A little behind on that one with Scales. That one up and out of the zone. Sun starting to set here at the Benton Athletic Complex. The lights haven't come on just yet. This one popped up back our direction. And he's going to make it into the Patriots. A little off-speed pitch there. She just had to reach out there and just try to Try to make contact because I think she'd already committed. Yep. Already seen it so far. Sanders has done a nice job of moving the eye level of the cabinet batters, but also speeding up and slowing down the bat. Looking for her third strikeout already in this contest. That one. Outside. Hit the catcher's mitt there, Eric King, but Sarah Watson was set up almost on the left-hander batter's box. Not going to get that call. If she's going to come at her right here. She don't want to put one on base, especially lead off the top of the second. Sanders right at him. Ken's fouled directly back right at us. On the scales, on base percentage of 556 this year. 22 hits. 46 official plate appearances. That one. Swing and a miss. Yeah, what a great job there. She just put it on the outside. Couldn't get a bat on that one, but uh, 
And she didn't stand up there and look at it. She was going to get a hack in, Bobby. Ryan Sanders got some velocity there. Gets her third strikeout, her third consecutive strikeout. That's going to bring up Emma Holland. Cavett still looking for their first base runner, their first base hit. Can it be Holland, who's hitting 382 on the season? Mm, Sanders being a sophomore, she's not rattled at all. That one misses inside. You mentioned the age there. It's the rich get richer, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, she'll be here for a while for yeah. sure. So if you're a softball fan in Arkansas, just get used to hearing that name. And then you got Woods, it's a junior. You got Stanford, it's a junior. I mean, you just got quite a few juniors on this uh, Bentonville loaded squad here. Little flare to the right side. Diving effort can't be made. Tristan Peterson tried to make the diving effort from first. Comes up just a touch short. Nice effort there for Peterson. It's going to be a good look at it. Just outreached arms for Peterson. Corners are playing in pretty good. A little bit of foul room here. The softball complex. Not nearly as much as course as the baseball side. Oh, misses inside. Two and one. Would you just like to see Kevin? I know they would like to just get one in play here to make uh, Benville play a little bit of defense. Jerry Potter's in the on deck circle. Let's get a base runner. A different look for a pitching staff or a defense. You never know what will happen. That one splits the heart of the plate. She stepped in the bucket there. She couldn't hit that one. There. She just swung. She... So two and two is the count. On Holland. Sanders has struck out the last three she's faced. Up with it, just too much velocity there, and another strikeout for Ryan Sanders. And she threw that one right by her. Bobby, she uh, she's got a couple of off speed pitches, and then all of a sudden she came in a little high and outside, and uh, she chased that one. Yep, you see a little bit of elevation there out over the outside third of the plate, just could not catch up with it. Could Hollins? We'll see if Potter can fare any better. Say that rice ball is one of the hardest things to hit, and I can see why. Potter comes up swinging and also empty on his first at bat. Just 182 on the season, but a very small sample size. Played in only 11 games this year for the Lady Panthers. Love to increase that average right now against uh, Ben Biltain. Right fielder. Allen misses inside. Starting to get a little sticky. To be quite honest, a little, yeah. bit, a little muggy. I guess you kind of expect that. Here it is, what, late May? Yeah, exactly. I'll probably end up turning something off here in a minute. No accident. A hardy cut there by Potter. Again, can't catch up with it. Sanders has got it working. And with the way Sanders is throwing it a little bit, you'd think some of these balls would be going to. To right field, kind of fall behind a little bit, and there's a pretty good sized gap out there in right center. Cavett has certainly struggled to catch up with Sanders. That one well outside the zone, goes back to the backstop as Sarah Watson can't handle it. He was up to count deuces across the board. So when you're seeing a pitcher that you're struggling to catch up with the velocity here, Corby, what do you have to do as, as a hitter? Do you move back in the, in the box? I mean, what, what do you have to tell yourself mentally? Move back a little bit, choke up on the back, and just put it in play. Can't do it there. Strikes out the side as Ryan Sanders. She struck out five of the six batters she has faced. And she is cruising. Let's we'll see what the Lady Tiger offense can add to their 3-0 lead as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championships right here on Arkansas PBS Sports. Can you see her greatness? 
when you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. We never gonna stop. Get your live action photos from the game at myarpbs.org forward slash photos. Grab a free download, half prints made. These are great championship keepsakes. And then Bill coming back to the plate for the second time. Very leading 3 0. To Lula Pascucci, the nine hole hitter, her first at bat in this championship contest. Junior that's committed to Southern Miss. Put away. Again, a small sample size for Tallulah. This 12 contest that she's played in this year. But hitting 406. Home run, eight RBIs. Scored 10 runs. Scucci swings through that one. That was pitch number 40 already for Michaela Bernard, the starting pitcher for Cavs. She really labored in that opening frame. She's got to get a quick inning here, give herself some rest. Brown ball right to Nicholson, the second, makes the easy flip. First out of the inning. It's a good start here for the Lady Panthers, just to get that first out. and. Uh, they put, they put the ball in play. They played a little defense behind her, so uh, maybe she'll uh, rely on her a little bit and throw some strikes. Nice, easy play there made by Nicholson. And flips the lineup over, so the leadoff hitter for Bittenville, Casey Wood. She walked, stole second, came around to score. She's not wasting any time, but swings through that one. I think she had one thing on her mind there, Bobby. That would be the 200 foot mark on the left field line. 200 feet all the way across. Left field line, dead center, the right field line. Another swing and a miss right underneath that one. Might have timed it up well, just couldn't put the barrel on the ball. Just a good look at the alignment for the cabin defense. They play Wood pretty much straight up. Connor looking great pitch there on the inside third. What you know, that's got to be a boost for Bernard out there in the circle to go ahead and get that leadoff batter uh, uh, for the Bentonville Lady Tigers to strike out, and she got her uh, uh, looking on that one. So we got two two outs here in the, uh, the bottom of the second. Great pitch there. Catches Wood looking and brings up Elena rushing. She struck out in her first plate appearance. That one slap foul down the third base way. What's the advantage of being a slap hitter compared to a, a standard stand in the box? Well, I mean, you know, being a slap hitter out of the left side, she kind of gets her good head start. And I wouldn't say that she'd be halfway down there. Of course, with my size, I don't know anything about slap hitting. <laughs> so it all has to do with speed, that's for sure, and being able to keep your eye on the ball. Yeah. It takes some major coordination to be able to hit a baseball or a softball while running. That time she slaps it again foul that direction. And that's the idea right there is you're not really trying to drive the ball to the outfield as a slap hitter. You're just trying to deaden the ball really right past you know, exactly. the, the, the pitching circle between there and third base. And you think your speed already running that direction out of that left handed batter's box is going to get you most of the way down the line. On this turf, a big hop helps as well. This is just a piece of that one. I also might have caught a piece of scales, the catcher. Well, that right there was a little bit more than what I would consider a slap swing. She, she had a little bit more behind that one. But. Russia hitting 478, so no matter what, how she swings it, she does it well. Out and high. Just kind of look at her feet work up there. She's, uh, she's moving around, which, again, for that left-handed batter, it, wouldn't say it gives them a head start, but yeah. it kind of gets them in that direction for sure. How many times have you heard a coach or a parent yell, keep your feet still? Well, that's not does not apply here. That one slapped right at the third baseman. A great throw in time. Adria Brady 
Guns are down at first in a one, two, three inning, and exactly what a Kaylee Bernard and Cabot needed. No runs, no hits, no errors. After two, Bentonville leads at three nothing as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. This month on Arkansas PBS. Dealing things is always more fun with you around. Eyes on the shine. I wish you were dead. There's more going on here than meets the eye. Put our lives in each other's hands. The lie when he jumped. This guy is our crime scene. We've been stamped before he exited the plane. Please be careful. I went caught in the middle of a fascist march. Enough is enough! They're coming for us, Daddy. I did what needed to be done. I know. Only on Arkansas PBS. For more than 50 years, Arkansas PBS has been a trusted resource. Our high quality programs are seen by viewers in every corner of our state, making on-air sponsorship a solid investment. Aligning your business with Arkansas PBS offers a powerful blend of community engagement, corporate philanthropy, and cause marketing. And our viewers remember and appreciate businesses that support our programs. Contact us today for more information on sponsorship opportunities. Join the baseball and softball conversation on social media with hashtag ARPBS Sports. Welcome back into the Benton Athletic Complex. Top of the third. Cabot still looking for their first base runner as they're trying to solve the puzzle. That is Ryan Sanders in the circle for Bentonville. There's a good look at the starting pitcher for the Lady Tigers. She struck out five in a row and five of the six Lady Panthers that she's faced. Pretty impressed with the way the Lady Panthers came out and played uh, uh, that inning right there and uh, just kind of went one, two, three and uh, get to find himself back uh, back at the plate. Yep, certainly a huge bounce back inning for Cabot starting pitcher Caleb Bernard. Now we'll see if the, their offense can join the act. Jordan Williams steps into the plate. Swing and a drive deep center field back to the warning track, but just going to run out of steam. What that looked like it hit a wall, Bobby. I don't know it when it took off. I thought it might have had to, it had the possibility of getting out of here, but uh, the, the way that sounded off the crack of the bat, we thought that was going to clear the scoreboard. But you're exactly right, Eric. There's a good look at it. I think she thought she might have got all of that one, but just dies out there at center. Elena rushing able to camp underneath it. First out of the inning after the first pitch of the inning. You got to like it. They came out swinging. Peyton Nicholson tries to lay down a bunch. Gets underneath it, fouls it straight back. And give a chance to talk about Jordan Williams' numbers. We'll get that next time around. There's Nicholson. According to the stats provided by Coach Cope, she does not have a hit this season. Played in eight, just eight games. That one catches the outside corner. Good pitch right there. I see what she uh, painted the black on that one. Three Burwell behind the plate. Quickly, Sanders ahead, 0-2. Off the edge there, Sarah Watson. You can kind of see it from our vantage point. We're directly behind the catcher. You can see how far she scooted out, set up behind the, the plate, really outside that right-handed batter's box. And you're not going to get that call. You're just hoping the, the batter will chase. Yeah, you're trying to get her to chase that one for sure. There's the one-two pitch. Swing, high fly ball, right field line. A long run coming over and makes the catch. What a great effort there by Amber Turner. Turner just laid out and made a great catch there in foul territory. Tell you what, that fence had to get close. I don't know how close it was over here, uh, Bobby, but what a great catch. And you know Sanders has got to like that uh, uh, help from, uh, from the outfield. There's a good look at it there. Turner makes the catch and goes into the dive. That is a star type play. If I had a sticker, I'd put a gold star by it. The fly out to right. So eight consecutive sat down by Sanders and Paige Pierpoint steps in with two outs here in the third. That one misses outside. Pierpoint 229 on the season, 12 RBIs. Got to find a way to put, put a runner on base, just put a little pressure on this Bentonville pitching staff and the defense. 
defense got kicking for Cabot. We just need to get this offense moving around. That one wow. slide down the right side as well. So you're seeing a lot better swings, at least in the bottom third of the lineup here. So Williams flies to uh, center. Nicholson flies to right, but they're putting better swings on. The first six batters really struggle to put the bat on the ball. So maybe starting to, to recognize something with the delivery from Sanders. Could be talking a little bit to these guys that are coming up. So uh, a lot of communication. Oh, the off-speed pitch there, nasty. That was pretty impressive. Just locked her up here, point, expecting the heat. A lot of times pulls the string on the changeup and couldn't get the bat off her shoulder. Five strikeouts now for Ryan Sanders, looking for number six. Got it. There's that velocity. Got that back foot moving there a little bit. And she just couldn't get up to it there. Just couldn't catch up with it. Six strikeouts, nine straight retired to start the contest. Bentonville leads it 3-0. They're coming up bottom of the third as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. Sports is, is so important to this state and the fabric of the state. And I appreciate Arkansas PBS doing all the state title games. And that makes it available for not just the fans in central Arkansas, or south Arkansas, but fans around the entire state. I can only think of the kids in small towns, and this is the biggest moment maybe in their sports careers. And they have that keepsake of having that game on TV to have with them the rest of their lives. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why, at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Every year we recognize outstanding Arkansas student athletes who've made a mark in the classroom as well as on the field. In the 6A classification, we're spotlighting Kylie Ward from Rogers High School, a second baseman, a junior, a 4.08 grade point average. She's going to attend the University of Arkansas Rich Mountain on a scholarship and academic scholarships. Kudos to Kylie Ward from Rogers, and I didn't even know the GPA went above four. Shows you how what my GPA was. Well, I, I didn't know it went above three. Uh, first pitch of the bottom of the third, source high. Bernard really settled in nicely in that second inning. Only needed 11 pitches to get through it. That one. Right down the middle, evens up the count, one and one. Sarah Watson, she walked and scored back in the first. Again, no, no real big hit offense here for Bentonville yet. Watson flares one. Be an easy play over at first and made. He retires the leadoff batter here in inning number three. Again, that's a good start for Bernard. You know, last one she got uh, she got a strike out there uh, to get that second out, uh, and uh, she actually got a, a nice play by the second baseman get the first out in that last inning. So uh, uh, right now this defense is helping her out a little bit. I just got underneath that one, Gariga there to make the easy play. It brings up Sanders. Sanders sends the first pitch back to the screen. Yeah, one thing about it, regardless what the count is or regardless the situation beforehand, these batters, <laughs> Bentonville are coming up ready to swing. Yep, Sanders was hit by a pitch, came around to score in the first. Well, again, fouled off. Think back to that first inning, Eric, and Bentonville scored on a pass ball a wild pitch and a throwing air exactly and uh, uh, and again they got the bat they got the base runners there without a hit That's right so so Sanders quickly falls behind 0 and 2 Bernard looking for another quick frame that one just a touch too high coach Cope wanted to know where that one was and unlike you I think that was just a little bit up in the numbers there Bernard working with a little more pace, too. Not quite as methodical during her process between pitches. Again, that one a little too high, right above the belt. Through the years, we've seen it in baseball, now softball. The strike zones gradually move down. It's no longer letters to knees 
A little bit lower than that. And again, you know, these uh, it's pitcher against pitcher here, so. Sanders, that one skied over the right side to see if there's enough room. And just cannot make the play for Emma Scales. The cabin catcher likely should have lost the headgear there to try to locate that pop fly. Just could not make the play. And now we'll see if Ryan Sanders, who was getting second life, can make him pay. And I think she was reaching out to try to see where that wall was. And it was, uh, just didn't carry as far as she expected. What do you think the thought process is of showing bunts here with two strikes is? Well, I think she's just trying to get her to, to throw a pitch, probably knowing if it's in there, she, she's probably going to turn around and slap it. So. so is that to slow you down as a hitter? You know, I, I, you mean as a pitcher? No, it's like as a hitter, do you show bunts to, to slow yourself down so you know you have to kind of shorten your swing? Well, that a little bit and also maybe to get a good eye on the ball. Sanders swings underneath that one and Bernard comes back with the big strike out there for the second out of the inning. No, and it didn't uh, it didn't slow her down any there. I think she just kind of squared up there maybe to think make them think she was going to bunt or, or maybe again to get a get a better look at it. But uh, she came out of her shoes on that one, Bobby. That's four strikeouts now for Kayla Bernard in the circle. They started to settle in. Two outs for Trista Peterson. She has the lone hit for Bentonville. She takes strike one. She was rewarded an infield single as the second baseman Nicholson couldn't handle a little flare in her direction. Well, really impressive with Bernard. He's just come out after that three three run first inning and just settled down and uh, it's going to make this Bentonville team uh, earn their earn their runs. Nice drive back up the middle, handled by the shortstop. An easy throw to first. One two three inning and Bernard starting to settle in for Cabot after three. Lady Tigers lead it 3 0. Lady Panthers need to get the bats going. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. With well over 2,000 Arkansas rice farms, 96% of them are family owned and operated. It's all about building community. The results we've been seeing have been very promising. I grew up watching the farm, knowing every detail about it. If you take care of the soil, the soil will take care of you. It helps us to give back to the land and make sure that it's going to be there for future generations. Every community has a story to tell. If somebody will tell it, it'll be interesting. Since 1976, McCormick Equipment Rental and Sales has been equipping Arkansans for the tough jobs, construction equipment and rentals, service and sales, and a proud underwriter of Arkansas PBS Sports. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Arkansas PBS provides election coverage you can trust. Tune in live for the primary results and analysis on Tuesday, May the 24th, beginning at 7 p.m. We're through three innings here, the 6A State Softball Championship in Benton, and it's Bentonville who leads it 3 0. Cabot, you have to have a base runner on the pass. Been nine up, nine down, as Ryan Sanders has been. Well, close to dominance in the circle. Six strikeouts of the nine batters she has faced. And back to the top of the order and pitcher on pitcher here. Bernard is going to step in. She grounded out to third to start the contest. Again, Cabot's really not uh, put anything in play here much uh, to speak of to make his defense play. Bernard takes that one. Touch high. It's ahead in the count. A few, Eric. I think just one base runner could, could maybe jump spark some, some momentum, at least give a little confidence to this Lady Panther squad as the wind starting to pick up, blowing out towards the left field line. Yeah. Oh, this is outside. Okay, but didn't have the power that this Benville Lady Tiger squad has, but I think they've mustered up some runs this year, as we can tell, or they wouldn't be here. So uh, you got to know they're ready to get those sticks alive. 199 runs scored for this cabinet squad this year and their 26 contests. 
Lights have come on. So I'm going to miss a hardy hack there for Bernard. Maybe the full me on that one. Yeah, I think she's the power hitter when it comes to that swing. Yeah, she chased one probably low in the zone there. Bernard was going to go after it. seven home runs, 25 RBIs this year. We helped out Sanders a touch. That one high. Trying to lay down a bunt, smartly pulls it back. This first time that we've really seen Ryan Sanders fall deep behind in the count. Three to one. Yeah, I think that's what uh, Bernard was doing there, trying to draw her a little bit to try to draw that defense in there from Bentonville and uh, make them think a little bit. And uh, she ended up throwing that one. Touch high. Center field, deep goal, solo home run. Bernard, one swing of the bat, gets Kevin on the board. Well, I was going to tell you right there, you know, when you go, when you're laid off batters leading your team in home runs, you know she's got a little pop, and uh, she showed it right there. What a great way to sit in there. She battled. She showed bunt the pitch before that, which we knew she probably wasn't going to. And I'll tell you what, she hit that one right on the nose. That was right, called barrel on the ball. That one never got higher than the top of the scoreboard. It was a straight laser beam right over the center field wall. The one swing of the bat, Cabins has got life. Their fans back into this contest, and the deficit now just two. It's amazing what one homer would do. I mean, one <laughs> swing of the bat. Yeah, yeah. You're exactly right. Now we'll see how Sanders handles that. First base runner she's allowed, first hit she's allowed. That one misses. Well, as good as she is, Sanders, you, you know, it kind of pumps his cabot squad up and says, hey, listen, she's not unhittable. I mean, not at, not at all. So I think the approach that the, the bottom third of the order took, you know, Ooh. to fly out to center, to fly out to right, I think that really gave a little momentum, a little. Uh, what do you call it? A little moxie there. Oh, exactly. the mental edge, if you will. And Cabot's not afraid. They're coming out swinging here in the fourth. On the top of the lineup, you know, they look over there and they say, hey, listen, if our bottom three and four are going out there swinging and being aggressive, we need to do the same. And uh, it paid off right there. Yeah, of course, this is the second time through the lineup. So got a little experience against the starting pitcher, Sanders. That one right down the middle. Good late movement there. It's a good angle. We've got outstanding camera work by the Arkansas PBS crew, and you can just see the, the late movement there that breaks right back over the heart of the plate. And Brady just couldn't get the bat off her shoulder. Took a little off there, and back to the strikeouts there for Sanders. I don't think she wanted to make her chase something, and she did that. And, uh, Threw a little off-speed pitch there on the outside of the plate and uh, got her to chase one. Seventh strikeout of the contest. Brady's been struck out both times. That's good look pitching. Good look at strike number two of that at bat. So one down now for Gariga. She struck out back in the first. Oh, pulled the string there. Change up really impressive from Sanders. You know, as soon as you get to where you think that's coming, you scoot up in the box a little bit, then <laughs> she ends up blowing one by you. And so, yeah, that's that's the name of the game. Whether you're playing baseball or softball, you change speeds like that, you're going to be tough to hit. And you immediately follow that up with a fastball. Well, late was Gariga, and just like that, Sanders ahead in the count, 0-2. Oh, I notice the close-up they give to Gariga there. She's got a smile on her face. you got to love that by your yeah. batter. She's in there battling with two strikes on her, and she's all grins, so. Seven strikeouts already for Sanders. Looking to add to her total, 119 punch-outs already on the season. That's, she pulled the string there on the changeup, and then way ahead, chops that one down to her head coach, Coach Cope. Man, the third that was, base box. That was a great job right there, just standing there and getting a piece of that ball. Yep. And so you go change up, fastball, change up. You would assume in that, that order, you come back with the heat here, try to blow one past Gariga. <laughs> Tried to do just that on the outside at half. And doesn't get the call. I'm not sure if we don't see that same pitch again, but a little down. Cabot 21 and 5 on the season. 
Three of the five losses to teams playing for a state championship this year. Bentonville, 23 and three. All three of their losses also to teams playing for a championship. The same team, strike out. Dariga goes down swinging for the second time today. So you, you think about it, Eric. The eight losses combined for these two teams, six of them, the teams that are playing for a state championship. Well, that's why Bentonville and Cavan are playing for a state championship. Well, that tells you about a lot of the uh, competition level here in, in Arkansas when it comes to fast pitch softball. And so uh, pretty impressive. It's also a tip of the cap to the schedule making. Exactly. So y'all playing up in competition. Exactly. No matter of their classification. Bentonville also has a win over Tuckerman, who won the 2A state championship earlier today. But you're talking about a team that was pretty impressive on the offensive side. I mean, yeah. uh, Tuckerman, again, that's a repeat for them as well. Right, yeah, Tuckerman thought they had a chance to really blow it open early. If you missed the 2A state softball championship earlier today, they loaded the bases in the first three innings. But they had to hold on for a late rally by East Poinsett County. That was fouled back to the backstop. Tuckerman goes back to back. We saw Woodlawn and 2A baseball finish the, their second of two straight state championships. Exactly. They handled Bigelow. Then the contest you saw right here on Arkansas PBS before we started this one. Well, that have been Conway and the Wampus Cats captured the 6A baseball crown and they took down Bentonville. 10 to 7. Long contest. A lot of runs in the baseball game. Yep. Just out in front of that one. Is Scales she tried to keep that one inside the third base line, but the changeup just too far out in front. Scales was sitting back on that in a little bit now. I wouldn't be surprised for sure right now is when you see this fastball. Exactly. It's going to be <coughs> definitely a way uh, because uh, Scales has got a little pop up there. Yeah, well, anytime you're that close to the changeup, you, you definitely got to speed up the eyes, speed up the bat. Expect the hard stuff here from Sanders. Stick with the off speed. So as what I know, that's why I'm in the booth, not in the box. Exactly. And she has no, nothing to do with my age. I'm the letter a little lighter a little bit as well. So counts even. Two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the top of the fourth. Cabot's already got one across. Solo homer for Bernard. Stays alive the scales. Which he's battling up there. Scales hitting 478 on the season. She did strike out back in the second. You take a game like this, Bobby, and it's three to one. And uh, again, one one swing of the bat got him that one run. So uh, anything can happen right here late in this ball game. They've got just as many hits on the board as Bentonville does. Lady Tigers are able to take advantage of Aaron's pitches and one air. Nice job again by Scales to slow things down and just get a piece of that one, fouls it back. She, well, she didn't put it in play, but that's about as impressive as you can get up there, but you just get a bat on that one. Yep. You're used to getting up there and hacking at it. All of a sudden, you've got to slow it down that much just to get a piece of it to have another opportunity. She gets a sign from Watson, her battery mate. Swing and a miss. Scales couldn't catch up with it. Strikes out the side, but not before Bernard cuts into the Bentonville lead. One swing of the bat, solo homer for Cabot. Bentonville leads it 3-1 as you're watching the Centennial Banks think softball championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Anticipation is building in the matchups that will decide what Arkansas's local and state political and judicial scene will look like. So join us as the votes come in on election 2022. Statewide primary coverage on Tuesday, May 24th, beginning at 7 p.m. It's analysis and insight on the races you care about. You know, I think sports are really big to a lot of people. And because it's an important part of our fabric in our community, and the one good thing about what I've seen is it's high quality production. You know, you think of the small communities all over Arkansas, it's a big deal that they can turn on the TV or DVR or whatever, and know they're gonna get a quality product. And so I think it just expands the, uh, the focus of what PBS is doing. You know, Arkansas PBS is doing a great job, and, and I think it's part of education. Going all in. Let's go. 
Learn more about the issues that impact our state with our long-running public affairs program, Arkansas Week. Fridays at 7.30 p.m. and Sundays at 10 a.m. right here on Arkansas PBS. Back here at the bottom of the fourth, Bentonville trying to get the offense going. Only one hit, but they do lead it 3-1. to one. And they've got the bottom half of the order. Coming up, Amber Turner lead off the frame. And high. Eric, you and I were talking during the break. This is, it's almost become habit watching Coach Kent Early down that third base box be coaching in this championship game. Ninth trip to the finals in the last 12 years and the sixth consecutive season the Lady Tigers have been on the largest stage. Well, in 17 seasons, he's been at Bentonville. And you look, overall record 407 and 97. Conference record 195 and 31. I mean, what a impressive resume, uh, Coach has. Yeah, 80% winning percentage in his career as a head coach, 86% in the conference. And that's that shows you they elevate their play when the games matter the most, uh, most ever, as far as consecutive appearances in a championship game in the largest classification, second longest streak in state history. Pretty impressive championships in 16, 17, 18, and 21. As that one misses inside, three and ones to count to Turner. But we've got four championships. We also got four runner-ups. Yeah, exactly. the, the, the even number years weren't very nice to, to Bentonville. 2010, 2012, 2014, they fell just short then 2019 to this, this Cabot squad. Foul back. And you know, Coach Cope, brought, Coach Cope brought that up, I'm sure, at some yeah. point. And the last time they lost in the, cha in the uh, championship game was against us. So it's pretty, uh, probably one of those things they talked about quite a bit in Cabot this week. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Any given day, you can take anyone down. Bentonville 23 and 3. As we've mentioned, there are only three losses to Benton, who is undefeated. They're playing for the 5A championship later this weekend. Well, and like you mentioned, too, Bobby, you, you go back uh, uh, to the scheduling here. These these coaches put these girls in the position to where it just makes them better each and every day. And uh, anytime you can play, well, Benton's the same same way. Benton's better and probably in that uh, state championship finals because they're playing teams like Cabot right. and Bentonville. Yep, got to you got to play up and you know if, if you're the best team in your conference or at least if you feel like you're the best team in your conference, you've got to step outside. That would foul back again. You see that happen a lot of times uh, across the state. You know, teams that think they're going to be successful, where it's football or basketball, they schedule up in the non-conference because sometimes the conference may not be what you're expecting to see in the postseason. That's because worst case scenario is you just cruise right through the season and don't yeah. play really much competition, and all of a sudden just get waxed in the finals. That's right. <laughs> yep. Turner, full count here against Bernard. That went too far inside. Turner earns the free pass. So first base runner since the first inning for Bentonville. With the fourth walk issued down by Bernard. Well, those walks were costly in that first inning. So uh, that, that started that run with, with those three runs that they end up uh, getting in the bottom of the first. Yep. The free pass is something that can kill you no matter what the stage of the contest. So we're going to have a a runner come in. Twenty three for Bentonville. We'll come on and run. See if we can find that somewhere on the sheets. We've got too many pieces of paper here. Way too many. Not on the roster, but she's number one in your hearts. <laughs> See if we can track down who twenty three is for Bentonville. First pitch swinging, a little flare to second base. Plays made there by Cabot's Nicholson. That's a quick out. Which he just got up there and uh, took the first hack at it. And luckily for Cabot, that, that one hung in the air a little bit. Nice job there to come over and make the play. A one on, one out. That pitch from Bernard high to Caden Stafford, who flied out to center to end the first. Oh, Stafford lays down the bunt. They're going to let it go foul, and it does roll foul. Nice heads-up play there by Drea Brady. 
And great job by Brady of letting that one go foul because I, I think with the way that one had a little hops behind it that we were fixing to have base runners safe every, every position there. Yeah, the, that one got deep enough to the third baseman. I don't think she was going to have enough to enough time to gun down the runner. Wisely lets that one go through the wickets and it rolls foul. Swing and a miss right underneath that one. The staffer now Bernard. Got herself into a little trouble with the leadoff walk. Has a chance to bounce back here and retire the second straight. Well, if you're Cabbage, you better have your head on swivel here because she tries to lay down a bunt there early and then she just hacks away at that one. She's got a little pop. Stafford flares that one over the right side. There's no easy outs for this Bentonville squad. You mentioned it. Most strikeouts by any player in the starting lineup is 14. On the season, and we're talking about 80 to 90 at bats. That's impressive. Just contact rate through the roof for this Lady Tiger squad. There's another flare to second base. Again, Nicholson there to make the play. Back to back. Pop outs to the second baseman. Went to the right place at the right time. Again, you gotta you gotta like that. If you're Cabbage, you get the lead runner on, and then and all of a sudden you get uh, two pop outs and uh, Lula Pascucci for her second plate appearance. She grounded out to second base in her first plate appearance. And she's committed to Southern Miss. That one goes to the backstop, going to allow the runner to advance to second base. Well, not to bring up any bad mojo, but that's kind of how they got their first run <laughs> with runners on base and a, and a wild pitch. So now the Lady Tigers have a runner in scoring position. Again, do not have a hit this inning. See what Pascucci can do now. 406 on the season, eight RBIs. Again, she's only appeared in 12 contests. Swings underneath that one. She's elevated the fastball to Bernard. Nice hardy hack there for Pascucci. Just can't catch up with it. Bernard one strike away from getting out of this jam. We talked about it in the first inning. I tell you what, these uh, Bentonville base runners, they like to get a, a pretty good jump over there. So a, a hit here probably will score a run. Pascucci can't catch up with it. Bernard pitches out of the potential jam. Strikes one out. One runner left. No runs, no hits, no errors. And we are through four innings of play. Bentonville leads it 3-1. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring, for everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau insurance agent. Farm Bureau insurance. Real service. Real people. This month in Passport on the PBS video app. Can you just slap me a little bit? Slap me, thank you. I've never put myself under this much pressure. I'm desperate to win. Nunu has cared for children whose parents have nowhere else to turn. It's not just a job. This is really our life. These and other shows from Arkansas PBS are available with Passport on the PBS video app. Celebrate game day under the arches. Access to tons of benefits through our rewards program are available today on the McDonald's app. We're loving it. We're through four innings of play, the home stretch of the 6A state championship game in front of us. Bentonville's got a 3-1 lead, but it seems like Cabot might have a touch of the momentum. A solo home run in the previous frame in the fourth. The Caleb Bernard hit that one. And now batters number five, six, and seven in the lineup. Is Emma Holland going to step in against the starting pitcher, Ryan Sanders? He's been cruising right along, 59 pitches up to this point. I'll tell you what, Bobby, if you look at this uh, Bentonville, Bentonville roster with a lot of those players batting uh, over 400, and you see what uh, uh, what Bernard has done uh, after that first inning is pretty impressive. 
And the scale steps in. A correction, Emma Holland. Emma's back to back in the lineup. Emma, this version of Emma, struck out back in the second. I've always wanted to deem that illegal, having two names back to back in the lineup card. She's asking for me to make a mistake. <laughs> and I oblige as that one's fouled out of play. Almost caught a unsuspecting onlooker because they weren't looking on. They weren't looking. And I'm sure somebody said heads up, so I guess yeah. everybody turns and looks up when they say that. Yeah. It's always fun. There's something coming at you, so you're supposed to turn and look at it. Yeah. Instead of catching it on top of the head, just catch it right in the chops. One on one's the count to Holland. Oh, nice pitch there on the outer half. Well, she went right at her right there. She's uh, she knew she's a little behind here. Uh, she's gonna make her, she's gonna make her earn this one. Command has not been an issue so far for Ryan Sanders, the starting pitcher for Bentonville. Nine strikeouts, no walks. Just the solo home runs, the only blemish. Oh, misses outside. See the, the pre-pitch routine. You know, we were talks about the, you know the. The shot routine for a free throw is pretty much the same thing as a pitcher. It's, it's kind of slow and methodical. See Sanders kind of wanders back towards second base. Finally, you know, touches the rosin bag. She's got the top of the circle, then finally gets back on the pitching rubber. That one flared deep left field back to the wall. It's going to be off the warning track. That's going to be at least two for Holland. They're going to stop her there. Lead off double for Cabot. The Lady Panthers are in business. I'll tell you what, that one right there, the wind got a little bit of that one. It kind of started off there on the left side of that left fielder, just kind of carried over. And uh, I'll tell you what, she found herself in a bind right there. And she knows she'd like to have that one back. But uh, uh, the two big hits that, that Cabot has had tonight, uh, and both one went over the warning track and that one hit the warning track. Now, Hallie Robinson kind of turned around on that one, might have uh, tipped off the end of her glove but couldn't make the play. Now Cabot's got a leadoff double here in the fifth. Jeremy Potter comes up swinging, so comes up empty. Sanders gets ahead in the count. Be interesting if Cappy gets this run across. Uh, does that change anything that Bentonville's doing? Uh, because a one-run game in, uh, in softball, anything can happen. Uh, chase that one out of the zone. Then Potter, well elevated. She's down 0-2 in the count. It's the first time we've had to see Ryan Sanders pitch with a runner on base. It's a different mentality. Someone's on the path, whether you're in the circle or in the field. Ah, flare down the right field line. Long run there for Peterson. Can't make the play. So Peterson make one the lunging catch earlier in the contest. Just too far a run for the right fielder there. Excuse me, the Turner. Just could not make the play. She's a. Uh... Went a little bit more to that right center here, giving her a little bit of line to work with over there. There's a lot of space in the left center gap as well. Left fielder, Allie Robinson, playing farther towards the left field line. Only a rushing. She's got speed. She's playing straight up. Swing and a miss. Nice pitch there, Sanders. She's shaking her head too. She knows she had that one. She. Uh, she knew exactly where she was going to put that pitch, and she did a great job there. Yeah, stayed low in the zone. Swung right through it, did Potter. She strikes out for the second time today. That's going to bring up Jordan Williams, who put a drive into one back in the third inning. She was first pitch swing and flew out to the warning track. But she was not afraid to come up hacking. Williams hitting 320 on the season. Again, first pitch swing, and this one was straight up to shoot. 
Stafford makes the play, the shortstop on the second base side of the second base bag. That's a big second out. Wow, she jammed her there a little bit. Great pitch there by Sanders. I mean, because I think everybody knew that after that first bat there, that uh, when she hit one deep to center field, she was going to come out there, and uh, she did. She, she took a hack right off the bat. You can see it there in the replay, the reaction from Williams. She knows she missed one there. Just, just got underneath that one a little too much. Popped it straight up on the infield. Two quick outs now for Cabot. Sanders quickly gets ahead now to Peyton Nicholson. You know, they don't want to race, waste this uh, leadoff double that they got here. And at least move them around here to give that next next batter the opportunity to drive her in. Yep. Potter and Williams couldn't do the job. Now it's on Nicholson. Don't add up. Just get him on, get him over, get him in. Yeah. Haven't moved her over just yet. Ain't going to miss. The velocity still there for Sanders. Uh, they might have poked her. I don't know. They might have poked a bear. I don't know. She is a. Uh, these last two batters, she's really. She's been different. Already with 10 strikeouts on the evening. 121 on the year. She wanted that one. A little extra long look into the catcher. Uh, we mentioned this earlier. She's just a sophomore. She has certainly been impressive. Just the, the one dirty word, if you will, the home run she's given up. I think she's going to stick with the fastball here. Nice job there by Sanders. Comes back and gets the punch out. So the leadoff double for Cabot goes for naught. As the Lady Panthers leave Emma Holland stranded at second. We're through four and a half. Bentonville still leads it. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. I think it's important for Arkansas PBS to have sports because it provides sports on a greater platform to the entire community. And it also gives people in various other communities an opportunity to see other schools and other athletes and to have a greater appreciation for not just their own community, but the sports that are available across the state of Arkansas. There are so many lessons that sports provides and it's one of the reasons why it's so important to the next generation of athletes coming up. Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect. That's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. Since 1976, McCormick Equipment Rental and Sales has been equipping Arkansans for the tough jobs, construction equipment and rentals, service and sales, and a proud underwriter of Arkansas PBS Sports. Copy of this game or any state championship game, go to mnmproductions.net to place your order. Bottom of the fifth, Bentonville coming to the plate. Top of the order coming up, Casey Wood. Her third at bats of the contest. Bobby, I saw Chris Cope uh, slap his hands as he was walking across uh, the, the field there. You know he missed one there, uh, getting a leadoff double. Certainly did. Wood walked and scored in the first, struck out in the second. Bernard back out there on the circle, that one hit her. So a quick free pass there for Casey Wood, second hit batter of the contest for Bernard. So she's walked four and hit two. Hey, my elbow hurt there. So Elena Rushing comes on, the slap hitter. She's 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground out. We'll see if they try to lay down a bunt and try to put a little pressure on the cabin defense. I'll tell you what, she's batting 478, so there's not many games she's been 0 for 2 in. So, yeah. so if you if you follow the math, she's due. But again, she always don't face the pitching like Bernard either. Bernard, though. Let's get it down to speed there. Not quite enough. It moves the runner over, gets the job done. Call that a sacrifice. And then Casey Wood moves up. Great job of laying the bunt down, but again, just a good job there of 
Bernard staying within herself, making a good throw after a play there, just getting that out. And uh, it's a very important out right now for a captain. It's, it's always impressive to me when a pitcher comes out of the circle, you throw an underhand, obviously, to pitch him. When you make the overhand throw to, to, get, a, to get a runner there at first, well done by Bernard. Allen too high in the zone, though. This is Sarah Watson. She's 0 for 1. Good walk back in the first and scored. She popped out to first her last time up. Nice off speed pitch there from Bernard. Evens the count at one. So we saw Cabot strand a runner in the last inning at second base. Now they're going to try to force Bentonville to strand one at second. That would load. Almost a little bit no man's land there for Wood. Huge secondary lead. Great job there by Scales of just keeping the ball in front of her, keeping that Bentonville runner there on second. That's where you're talking about, Eric. You've mentioned it a few times. When they take that secondary lead, they're hoping that that ball just squirts away even a little bit. They're going to be on, on the move. Just like that. Low throw and then a late throw. So Wood able to swipe third. But they watched her bobble that first one, and then all of a sudden she bobbled that when they were ready. Yeah, you could tell after the last pitch she was going to move on anything that was questionable or not handled easily by the backstop for Cabot. And that time the throw from Scales just could not catch the speedy wood. Three and one's the count to Sarah Watson. That one looped over to the right side, bounces off the top of the first base dugout. And that fills up the count. Maybe don't, don't be surprised if. Uh, she puts one into play here that Woods don't try to score. I mean, uh, she's got some wheels over there. That's a good look at Wood diving head first into third. And you see how much you slide on, on the artificial surface. And a team that's played on the turf before certainly has an advantage. That one foul down the third base side. Because to me, that's the biggest uh, difference other than a ground ball on, on the field is sliding into a base. I remember the first year we had the championship games, I think it was at, at Conway and UCA. We saw a number of players overslide the base because they're not used to pull, they're, they're running the pass on, on turf. That one. The loop down the first baseline. Tough play. Can she make it? No. Brianna Garga tried the over the shoulder catch. Ran into the netting. Not even been the opening to the bullpen. Well, you know. Of course, Cope definitely wants an out here, but that one right there, I bet he's glad they didn't catch yeah. it because uh, having to turn around and set your feet and get a good throw in at home plate, uh, that might have gave a run to Bentonville. That's exactly right. Watson looks at strike three called. <laughs> Bernard pulls string on that one. She, uh, it didn't bother her that the girl just got a piece of it. She was going to hang in there and throw her that third strike. And uh, again, she battles, Bobby. She battles hard in that circle. Yeah, here's a good look at it. I don't think she was ready for the off speed pitch. And Watson goes down looking. That one pops straight up. The catch is made there by Scales and Cabot. Just like Bentonville able to do in the last inning, Strands a runner. At second base, or in scoring position as it moves it up to third, but we are through five innings of play. Bentonville leading 3-1. You're watching the Centennial Bay State Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Okay, Frisbee, let's remember, it's one bark for true and no barks for false. Arkansas PBS is Arkansas's largest classroom. Bark! Frisbee didn't eat my slippers. Oh, Frisbee, how could you? No, I'm sorry, Miss House. I was gonna tell you, but it slipped my mind. Please don't let it slip your mind and donate to Arkansas PBS today. Bark! Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first. By empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charity, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank. Member FDIC. Coverage you can trust. Tune in 
live for primary results and analysis Tuesday, May 24th, beginning at 7 p.m. Starting to run out of chances on the Lady Panthers of Cabot. We enter the sixth. They trail it three to one. Bottom of the order coming up, Paige Pierpoint. Number 25, Cassidy Alford. Pinch hitter coming in. Cassidy Alford, 25, going to replace Pierpoint. Cassidy. Does not have a hit on the season. Four plate appearances this year. So tough task to, to step into the state championship game and face a pitcher who's thrown as well as Ryan Sanders, but that's what Alfred is facing right here. What Benville's probably not used to is they have a lot. <laughs> After the first inning, they're, they're in the hole. I mean, uh, yeah. but they had a big first inning. Would, uh, would give them the lead right now. Alford swinging at that one. That one fouled out of play. So quickly, she's in an 0-2 hole. You've been sitting on the bench for most of the game, Eric. I mean, what are you, what are you telling yourself mentally to, to get ready for this con ready for this at bat? Well, you're still in the ball game. I mean, that's one thing you can take positive to the plate. You're still in a ball game. Uh, you're two runs down. We saw what one shot did. And so uh, let's muster up a couple base runners and try to score some runs. So Alford's down 0-2. Uh, misses low for Sanders. Sanders has struck out 11. Has not issued a free pass. So one. Two hits allowed. One was a solo homer. Three to one's our score. Bentonville looking to repeat. Sport right by did Sanders. Strike out is now at a dozen. And Alford came in and she was swinging the bat. She just didn't stand in there and let Sanders throw it by her. So. Uh, uh, again, it's a pretty impressive job uh, in the circle from both of these pitchers tonight. That's a tough task for anybody. And Alford comes off the bench cold and can't catch up to the velocity of Sanders. First out of the sixth inning is recorded. So back to the top of the lineup, and the player who's done the most damage, that's Bernard. One for two with a solo homer. to strike one. You know, she's going to be kind of picky where she throws this ball because uh, I saw Menard's power early, so. Two run lead, they have a chance to be a little picky here. They'll have to give up the heart of the plate. Now an elevated. Bernard can't catch up with it. She's quickly in an 0-2 hole. Well, like Sanders, I'm sure it's hard to calm her down. <laughs> Just tell her to go at her, and I think that's what she did there. That's what competitors do. You won the last battle. I'm, I'm going to battle back and win this one. Ryan Sanders, 123 strikeouts and eight walks this season. That one outside, including a 12-0 strikeout to walk margin today. That's that's impressive. That kind of command for a sophomore yeah. is unreal. Well, on a stage like this, I mean, you're in the state finals and great crowd, great night. One and two. That one stays alive. Nice job by Bernard to slow down the bat. Let's get a piece. Someone is completely set here in Benton. Wind started to pick up though as the sun is set. Blown out almost straight to left field. It's a great day all the way around now. The ball. Weather has been perfect. A little cloudy this morning for the first baseball game, but it cleared out. Nice day in central Arkansas. That one popped up middle of the infield. Stafford wanders over, makes the play. Well, she found the right spot for that one in there. Just got in on the hands there of Bernard. Retires the leadoff hitter for Cabot. Now Andrea Brady. She struck out twice. Looking in the first, swinging in the fourth. Going to 
Well, one thing, of course, you always have to be ready for the ball to be hit to you, but they're at the Defense hasn't really been tasked to do a whole lot for Bentonville. Oh, well, you know, the right fielder made a great catch there uh, in foul territory, and then the hit out there to uh, uh, to the left fielder got in play. But other than that, the, the run they scored was, was not catchable. So Only six balls have been put in play. Seven include the home run. Five have been retired as outs. Here's one put in play, grounded to the first, and going to race to the back. Does Peterson, and a quick one, two, three inning on the three unassisted there. Cabot down to their final three outs, but Bentonville's going to try to add to their lead. We head to the bottom of the six. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. Never gonna stop. Never gonna stop. If you love seeing these televised high school sports championships, please consider making a gift to Arkansas PBS today. Three to one, Bentonville leads it as they bat in the bottom of the sixth. Nard back out there for the sixth inning. The line on the cabin pitcher. Five innings pitch, just one hit allowed. Two earned runs, three total runs. Struck out six, has walked four, hit two more batters. 90 total pitches for the cabin starting pitcher. She needs to keep the deficit at two to give her offense a chance coming up in the seventh. Trista Peterson steps into the box to lead off the inning. Takes ball one. The four that she walked was early, in, or the two that she walked out of the four was early in the ball game. So she's kind of got into a rhythm here. Uh, if they can just uh, get a one, two, three inning here and uh, hopefully muster up some stuff in that bottom of the seventh. Yep, three walks and a hit batter all in the first inning. Of course, that resulted in three runs scored for the Lady Tigers. And it's really been smooth sailing since that point. An infield single is the only thing that she's given up. And you know, Bentonville would love to. For this to be their last at bat, they'd love to close it out in the top of the seventh for sure. Peterson has the lone hits of the day. And this one popped up on the right side. Nicholson didn't make the play, but they're going to say she did step on the bag in time. A lucky Blake break there for Peyton Nicholson in the cabin defense. A little miscommunication between the second baseman and the first baseman. Thought about the pop up. It might be an interesting look at this replay. Make sure that the foot was on the bag before the runner got there. Either way, first out of the inning is recorded. Here's a good look at this. A little miscommunication there between Nicholson and Garga. And eh, might have, runner might have beat that one. Yeah. Peterson got down the line pretty well. And Coach Ken Early is wanting an explanation of the call, trying to talk to the first place umpire and find out what my, Joe Duhon saw. Okay, yeah. Uh, that's close at the tie at best. And of course, the tie goes to the runners. A pretty good look at it. And yeah, I'd say that's a tie at best. But either way, the first out of the inning is recorded. Now, Cabot, see if they can take advantage of that break. Only one of the few mishaps we've seen tonight. Yeah. It's been a clean game. Seen just the one throwing error. Either way, you got to move on from that one if you're Cabot or Bentonville. So one down now here in the bottom of the sixth. Amber Turner up to the plate. She walks in the fourth. Struck out in the first. Not many errors can you say go in your favor, but uh, that one right there did. Yep. It's also a good heads up play to go ahead and step on the back. Exactly. Even though obviously the first mental thought is to 
to let down a little bit. Oops, we've missed it. And yeah. then, you know, it, yeah. so nice job by Nicholson to maintain her composure and record the out. Two zero count to Turner. That one's low. Three and zero. Bernard's taking a little time out there. You know she's probably thinking. Savannah Schnickel is next. She walked, popped out. Her two trips to the plate today. That's a four pitch walk there. So Turner takes the free pass. You know, I think Turner knew that right off the bat. I mean, yep. she, she took that one with confidence, that's for yeah. sure. Fifth walk of the contest issued by Bernard. A lot of times that gets you called right back to the play. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> we'll see if the Lady Tigers can take advantage of the base runner. Schinkel hit 418 this year. That one's high. So command issues have started to rear its ugly head for Bernard. As you said earlier, she's getting close to that 100 pitch mark. Yep. The next one she throws will be pitch number 99 in the contest. Nice swing and a miss there for Schinkel. So the next pitch that Bernard throws will put her in triple digits. Let's go look at the Cabot starting pitcher. Wow. She blows another one by. 99 and, and, and 100 had a little uh, little meaning behind them. A little extra oomph. She's going to find a way to get out of this inning, though. Keep the deficit at two. It's Cabot's final at bats coming up. That one just outside. Going to even up the count to a piece. Kate Stafford. Next, she's 0 for 2. Bentonville just hasn't been, has not been able to put the ball in, in play. Didn't put any pressure on this cabin defense. That one up and away. Now full count. We'll see if they put the runner in motion. A lot of that has to do with. Uh, Bernard and I mean she's had some command in this ball game, especially after that first inning, as we said. Even the, the contact that Bentonville has made is a lot of it's been pop-ups on the infield. Talking four pop-ups on the right side in the last three innings. That one's swinging a miss. Schenkel goes down swinging. Seventh strikeout of the contest for Bernard. You look at her season totals, already impressive season totals. Again, she's committed to Arkansas Tech. 189 punch outs now. And again, we're over that 100 mark, and she just seems to get stronger. Here's Stafford. Takes that one high. Be sure to stick around all weekend long here in Benton at Arkansas PBS. More championship games tomorrow starts at 10. Coming in on the hands, which is a nice job by Stafford to get a piece of that one. Fouls it over the third base dugout. The 1A games are tomorrow, 10 and 1 respectively. Start we start with softball tomorrow. The 1A softball championship followed by the 1A baseball championship. Another foul back. And tomorrow night, the 4A championship games. Soccer also going to fire up again tomorrow. It's going to be a busy weekend around here in Benton. Four state champions are going to be crowned today. Eight more tomorrow. That one well out of the zone. It evens up the count of two and two. I don't want to jinx you, but it seems like the weather's going to be okay as well. Yeah, at least tomorrow it's supposed to be. Yeah. So we'll, we'll <laughs> well, keep well, our fingers crossed. Day by day, yeah, is that we take things day by day around right here. 20 total championship games in three days here at the Bentonville, or Benton Athletic Complex, excuse me. Swing and a miss. Nice job by Bernard. Gets out of the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, or runner left. But Cabot, they are down to their final three outs. Can they mount a rally, or is Bentonville going to repeat? We'll find out next as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. 
For almost four decades, Arkansas Week's been keeping you informed of the news and issues that matter most. Featuring the newsmakers, the experts, the analysts, the journalists, the thought leaders who shape life and news and opinion in Arkansas. So join us as we continue to provide in-depth conversation, in-depth coverage from our new modern state-of-the-art studio home where we'll cover the news as never before. So stay connected to the pulse of Arkansas with Arkansas Week. To me, it's about being a good neighbor. It's one of the only ways that we have to bring the pandemic to an end. If I had a pill I could give patients to prevent cancer, I would absolutely do it. Nothing like that exists right now. But I do have a vaccination that can prevent you from getting COVID, from being sick from it, from spreading it to others, and from dying from it. Join us. Get the shot. Blueberry and the gang are back in July. The Summer Camp Fun airs Fridays at 9.30 a.m. through August the 12th. Ryan Sanders back in the circle for Bentonville trying to close this out. There's a good look at the sophomore. Six innings pitched, two hits, one run earned, no walks, 12 strikeouts for the right-hander at 86 total pitches and 61 strikes. She's not wasting any time, but she is going to have to face the heart of the order. Three, four, and five up for Cabot. And up first, number 13, Brianna Garga. She struck out twice. But as we've seen, all it takes is one swing of the bat, and things can certainly change. Well, and as we saw early in this ball game, the bottom part of this lineup for Lake, uh, Lady Panthers, they don't mind swinging the bat, Bobby. And so uh, they're actually one of the few that got a bat on the, a bat on the ball there early. That's right. Going to go through the meat of the order, exactly why you put them up there in the top third of the battle. It's going to be Garga, Scales, and Hollins. Last chance for the Lady Panthers. Lady Tigers 23 and 3 on the season. First pitch foul and straight back. Sanders quickly gets ahead in the count. State championships for, for Bentonville have been plentiful. 2016, 17, 18, also in 21. They remember what happened in 2019. They lost to this cabin squad. There's nobody won one in 2020. Another one foul back. Sanders ahead 0-2. Oh, well, state championships. And man, look at the conference championships. <laughs> 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18, 21. Uh, again, this year, I tell you what, uh, what a resume. It's uh, the, the early family, the coaching tree, of course. His father, Alvin. So it pretty much is Arkansas softball. You, you said that, I believe, during one of the commercial breaks. Of course, longtime coach at Arkansas, Monticello. Just a touch outside, but it's not just father and son, it's brothers too. Exactly. Family affair. Preston Early, outstanding gross basketball coach there at Rogers. As they appeal the call there. Another brother, Brian, coached at Fayetteville for a time. Now a defensive line coach for the University of Houston. If you think your family can coach, compare yourself to that one and you think otherwise. Pretty impressive. Oh, look at the great coaches, they're great people. Nothing but respect for the early family. Swing and a drive, left field side. That one's going to get out of play. Do it again. A chance to catch up with Brother Preston. It's a 6A basketball state tournament at Little Rock a couple months ago. I've always enjoyed talking hoops with Coach Early. This showcase is all about his brother and his team. Kent has got a dynasty going. Swing and a miss. It doesn't look like it's going to stop with a sophomore in the circle right now either. 13 strikeouts for Ryan Sanders. And the first important outs in the seventh inning, the lead up batter is retired. Garriger goes down, swinging for the third time today. Emma Scales, a cleanup hitter for Cavett, steps in for her third plate appearance. She struck out in the second, struck out in the fourth. Hills back in 478. You know, she'd like to add a little bit of that right here in the top of the seventh here for the Lady Panthers. 
Bentonville defense playing straight up, even with the back, both corners. Off speed pitch. And so that was foul. The home plate umpire made the call, maybe a touch late, but he did make the call. And Scales gets the benefit of that decision. She gets to come back and continue the event. What a great job out there. The third baseman just playing through him. He was she made a short throw to the first base. So scales. No one count. So she can take advantage. Second opportunity here. He's fouled off right side. Well behind that fastball from Ryan Sanders. They don't ask me who gets the MVP, but right now I think I have a hard time giving it to anybody but Ryan Sanders, the pitcher for Bentonville. I'm with you on that one, and uh, wouldn't be surprised right here if this one she didn't take a little bit off this ball. Sidney Watson calling the game behind the plate. Exactly right there, Eric. Took something off of that and just got a piece of it. Found it right back into the catcher, Watson, to stay alive. Watson took a pretty good one off the chin there. Great look at it here. That one well, that's actually, off the umpire. The shoulder of the umpire. Nice job by Ray Burwell to stay in there. He's tough. He's a hockey player. 0-2 <laughs> two counts to Scales. One down here, top of the seventh. We play seven innings, high school softball. And up and away. So it's always the, the, the final inning when things are, the outs are starting to be numbered. You can kind of feel the, the tension. Exactly. There, and you can certainly feel it, especially down the left field line, third base side, as the Bentonville faithful hoping to celebrate another softball championship. Exactly. You got one team over here that's ready to storm the field, and you got another one over here that's hoping to see. Three or four more batters, hopefully. One two pitch. Oh, well, excuse me, swing, but got just enough of it. Did scales. They'll do it again. Tried to check the swing, couldn't hold it up. Just enough of it to stay alive. We're also inching towards the two hour mark. One less. Started at 7.06. Six minutes to nine in Central Arkansas. Sanders trying to slow it up. They said she couldn't check the swing. Another strikeout. She pulled the string on that one for sure. She uh, she knew exactly where she wanted that one. A little off speed pitch up in the eyes, and uh, she couldn't hang off of it. She tried to check the swing, but Burwell said she went around. For the 14th punch out of the contest, and now a final out is in front of Cavitz, represented by Emma Holland. She struck out the second, doubled off the left field wall in the fifth. She scales eyes on that replay. She thought, she thought that was a beach ball, and then all of a sudden uh, she couldn't hold up her swing. Ryan Sanders, the sophomore right hander, trying to finish it off in the circle for Bentonville. First pitch swinging. Emily Whitman is the pinch hitter for Cabot. So excuse me. So Whitman hitting for Holland. A last ditch effort here for the Lady Panthers. Trying to capture their second ever state championship, but they're down to their final two strikes. Surprise. Been, been closing us out with the strikeout. Yeah. He has been pinpoint tonight for sure. Honestly, that would be fitting to the way that Ryan Sanders has pitched tonight for Mettonville. Of course, you got to point to a lot of players. Eight hitting over 400. Watching the work she's done, towing the rubber for the Lady Tigers is a big reason why they're playing for a championship tonight. 
flared down the left field line, does just get out of play, and now Cavett's down to their final strike. If they're battling, you see Coach Cope over there on the third. She, he's giving them that fist pump. Yep, we're, out of, yep, we're out of softballs, so we need one. I am told that so you can't play a softball game without a softball. So yeah. if anybody in the, in the stands has one, if you're out there, about, if you happen to not be near a, a grocery store or an athletic sporting goods store, maybe go get us a ball. Oh, there we go. There we, go. we got one. Let's get So Ryan Sanders trying to finish this one off, giving up one run on just two hits. The phones are out admitting they're trying to get that last, last, last strike uh, recorded. Sanders, 91 pitches time. And close this one out with the complete game. One two pitch. That one it stays alive. We're gonna need that softball back though. <laughs> she's, not, she's not going down without a fight, that's for sure. Again, this is Emily Whitman pinch hitting for the Lady Panthers. Whitman hitting 463 on the season. Again, going through her routine. She hasn't deviated too much from it. She is methodical. Again, the one two pitch. A fly ball, left side. Stafford's there. Championship for Bentonville. Tell you what a great all around job by this Bentonville Lady Tiger squad. Again, you can't take anything away from Cab. Came back after a rough first inning. She battled, held a great offensive team. Uh, Bobby down to just nothing, really. And uh, But again, uh, you can't take anything away from uh, from what this Bentonville Lady Tiger squad's done this year. Now, all championships are not built the same. If you had told Kent earlier they were going to have one hit today, he would have said, we're going home a loser. But they found a way to scratch across three runs in the first. And the Lady Tigers are your 6A state champs. We're going to step aside. Trophy presentation coming up. You've been watching the 6A states championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect, that's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. Since 1976, McCormick Equipment Rental and Sales has been equipping Arkansans for the tough jobs, construction equipment and rentals, service and sales, and a proud underwriter of Arkansas PBS Sports. Local broadcast of Arkansas PBS programming is made possible in part by Community Bakery. Scratch-made breads, pastries, cakes, treats, and locally roasted coffees served daily at two locations in Little Rock, 1200 Main and 270 Shackleford. There's a look at your state runner-up, the 6A state softball championship game. The Cabot Lady Panthers just received their hardware. One run on two hits, the solo home run by Bernard. Just not enough, though, as the Bentonville Lady Tigers repeat in their fifth state championship since 2016. Get early in his Lady Tigers. It's a much deserved hardware. You got back to back state championship for Bentonville. And if you look, go down this roster right here in the youth, you definitely think that you'll see this team back next year. 
No, there's no question about it. I mean, you talk about the number of championship appearances that they've made since 2010. I mean, you know, nine championship appearances in the last 12 years. There's no way that they're going to not be here or not be in the contention of playing for a championship. That's the standard at Bentonville, and, and that's why people expect them. That's why they play the Bentons. That's why they play the Tuckermans of the world because of this. And they've got the, this, this kind of talent, and we saw in the circle, which you got to assume that she's going to be the MVP. But the way that Ryan Sanders pitched with her 14 strikeouts was impressive. Well, what a great job she did <laughs> as a sophomore. And, I mean, you, as you said, you go back and you look at this team. you got to expect them to be here. But it's going to put a bullseye on them a little bit. People want to play them, and uh, they want to get that win. But it's going to be a hard chore, that's for there's sure. There's no doubt about that. So there's your 6A state champion, the Bentonville Lady Tigers. But we are just getting started this weekend. And the weekend of champions, day one is in the books. But coming up tomorrow, 10 a.m., the 1A softball finals. The Taylor Lady Tigers against the West Side Lady Eagles from Greer's Ferry. First pitch, 10.05. Pre-game going to start at 10. And we've got a full day of championships here in Benton. 1A softball, 1A baseball, then 4A softball and baseball followed by that. And can't forget the soccer championships get underway tomorrow as well. So if you can't, you know, get out here to the Bentonville Athlete, Benton Athletic Complex. Watch it right here on Arkansas PBS. But if you can, if you're here in Central Arkansas or you want to make the trip, come on down, support Arkansas athletics at the, the highest level. You're going to see some quality baseball, softball, and tomorrow soccer. And a great facility. There's no question about that. Well, that's Eric King. I'm Bobby Swafford. Appreciate you guys tuning in tonight. Be sure to be back tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., as more hardware are going to be handed out. You've been watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports.